everybody, welcome back to The Messy Cook 1970. Today we are making potato leek soup. I will post the full recipe at the end of the video. Uh, what we're going to need are some leeks. I have three leeks here. We're going to cut off these yucky green tops, cut them down the middle and rinse them. We need uh, some celery, uh, some fresh dill, or you can do dried as well. I like the fresh. Uh, some thyme, some butter. We're also going to be adding in some salt and pepper to taste, a little bit of flour and some heavy cream to thicken it up. Also uh, some potatoes, which I'm about to wash up, and some stock or water. So I'm going to get all these veggies and everything prepped. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to start, uh, bring the stock to a boil and add in the potatoes to get them to start cooking and get these veggies ready. As you can see here, I'm using new potatoes. I want six cups chopped. You see the size here uh, I have is just small little bite sized pieces, uh, size of pieces you would probably want in your soup. Um, I'm going to do six cups of these and we do leave the skins on so I'll continue to chop those. Okay, so this is the last of the potatoes here. And that measures up to our last six cups here. So we'll just put these in the bowl. I'm going to take over here and see if the stock is boiling. Let's see. Not yet, it's getting there, so I'm going to give that a little stir. Uh, I have used chicken stock, but uh, and actually I've used um, just a no-name brand chicken bouillon. I'll show you here. This is chicken bouillon concentrate. Um, this is, you know, the lazy man's way of doing it. it tastes totally fine. You can use uh, chicken stock from a box, homemade chicken stock, or uh, vegetable stock if you prefer, or you can just use water. So. That water is, uh, or sorry, chicken stock is just about to a boil. So when that comes to a boil, I'm going to add the potatoes in. I'm going to continue on. I need one cup of chopped celery. And you can double this recipe if you want. This recipe calls for six cups of stock or water and one cup of chopped celery. So I'm going to chop up the celery here. We're also going to have two cups of chopped leeks. So I'm going to continue on until I get my cup. And uh, we'll get to the point uh, in just a couple of minutes to put those potatoes in. Now I do use new potatoes. Like I said, these are a little bit more waxy. So they make for a better potato for soup as it will hold up a little bit. Um, and you could use russet if that's all you have. That's totally fine as well. So like I said, in most of my recipes, it's about what you like and what you have. Um, but if you want to know what works best, definitely a new potato. All right, so the stock is boiling. I'm just going to toss the potatoes in there. I'll just dump those right in. And we're going to give those a quick little stir. And we're going to cook them till they're fork tender. I don't want them too mushy. Uh, when that's done, we're going to take uh, half the potatoes out. And we're going to blend it with some of the stock to smooth it out and keep some of the chunks in there. I'm going to continue on and get that celery and leeks uh, started and chopped. And then we're going to move to this big pan. And we're going to saute those uh, veggies to get them softened up for the soup. All right, so I have three leeks here. I've chopped off. They're a little bit older, been in the fridge for a couple of weeks, but they're still all right. So I've peeled off the outer layers. I've taken off all the green hard parts. We don't want to eat that. It, uh, they tend to be a little bit tough. Uh, in here, sometimes you're going to see a little bit of dirt. These ones are pretty good, but I am going to chop these in half, give them a really good rinse, and then we're going to slice them lengthways. I'll get those washed up now. So just make sure you're getting in between all of those little layers. Let it drain off, set it aside, and do your other ones. So I'm going to continue with the other three of these. We just want to be sure we don't get any dirt in there because nobody likes a crunch in their soup. So I'll just finish this one off. It looks good. And I'll continue on with the other ones and we'll start chopping. All right, so what I'm going to do is just slice these lengthwise very thin all the way through. Remember, bend your fingers, tuck them in so they don't get sliced, and slice these nice and thin all the way through. We want two cups. If you have a little bit more, that's not a big deal, or a little bit less, but approximately two cups. So I'm going to be cutting through the rest of these, and uh, we'll get to sauteing the veggies in a few minutes. Okay, so I've, oh, yep, so I have chopped up uh, one cup of celery. Let's do a little bit over, and it's supposed to be two cups of leeks, but I had about two and a half cups at the time I chopped, and I do like a little bit more leek. Uh, if you haven't had leeks before, they're a mild type of, kind of like a mild green onion. 
Uh, we're going to take these to the stove. So what we've done is I've turned the stove on, whoops, let's see here, in medium heat. Hopefully we can see here. Uh, potatoes are still boiling away. So I've turned the stove on medium heat and I put in um, two tablespoons of butter. And you could add a little bit of olive oil as well if you want. So we want to kind of get this, move that out of the way. Uh, we want to get this uh, melted down. So I'll put it at medium high. This is my power burner. I tend to use this a lot, even though, you know, it just heats up a little bit more. But so we want to get that melted. I'll let that melt down a little bit. And while the rest of that's melting, I am going to toss in the leeks and the celery. And we want to cook these for approximately... 15 minutes just to kind of cook them down. We don't want them brown. We want to keep them uh, opaque so they're not browned on the edges. The butter will melt underneath. And we're just going to stir this up here. Like I said, we want to get it just so they're opaque and softened. So we're going to let that butter melt in. Let these saute a little bit. And I will come back when they're just about ready. In the meantime, these potatoes We'll just take a little peek here, are still boiling, and I'll give them another five minutes, and uh, we're going to check those and see if they are soft enough to blend a little bit. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Now while these veggies are sauteing, I'm going to add in the herbs now so they can cook down a little bit. Um, you can use fresh or dried thyme. I'm using dried thyme, and I'm going to add in one teaspoon of dried thyme. And uh, normally if you're using uh, dill weed, uh, the dried, you would use... Uh, one and a half teaspoons. I'm using fresh, so I'm adding in a good two and a half tablespoons. Um, I like a little bit more dough in this. I don't know it seems like an odd thing for potato leek soup, but trust me, uh, don't omit it. You, uh, you won't get as quality a soup as you do if you omit that. So we're just going to get that mixed in and cooked down and softened with these celery and leeks. So I'll just continue with this until they're softened down. Okay, so the recipe does call to have these uh, leeks and celery covered. Uh, so I'm going to cover them, and they're going to cook for 15 minutes. Actually, my timer's on already for something else, so I'm going to just kind of keep that monitored when it's down to two minutes. I will stir it occasionally just to make sure it's not browned, and I'm going to keep it at medium heat. All right, so these potatoes are pretty well cooked. I don't want to overdo them because we are going to simmer it still, so I'm going to take some of these potatoes out of here. Put them in my Vitamix, or you can put them in a blender, or you can use, take some of them out uh, and put them in a bowl, and then use um, a hand blender, uh, with an immersive blender if you want, um, and just blend up. My, uh, since I have uh, the blender, I'm going to put in, they say, the recipe I think says three quarters of these, but I like this fairly chunky, so I'm going to take, I don't know, maybe half of them out. So I'm going to take about three cups worth of potatoes. That's probably about three cups there. I'm going to add a little bit of the stock from there, and we're going to get that in here so we can get this blended well. Okay. Just want to make sure there's enough to blend it. What we're going to do is we just want to get this thinned down. Um, this is going to help thicken the soup a little bit, give it a little bit of texture. So that, hopefully, I'll do one more, is going to be enough. And I'm going to turn this soup down, uh, these potatoes and that, down to just a low right now. And I'm going to get this blended over here. Okay, so I got my Vitamix on and the lid is nice and tight. We're going to turn this, sorry, I should start this on low always. Turn it on and just let it blend and turn it up to high and leave it for about a minute. Okay, that's been just about a minute. We'll turn that off and we're going to take this and we're going to put it back in with our potatoes. This already looks good, so you can see this is a nice thickness here. You can see how that's thickened up a bit. Um, like I said, you can use a hand blender. Uh, you can use your Vitamix if you have one. If not, just any blender. Just be sure if you do have a regular blender and you're doing it in that, put a towel over the lid uh, when you're um, blending because this one holds really well. I know I've used, before I had my Vitamix, I used other blenders. And without doing that, sometimes that hot um, broth spits back at you, and trust me, you don't want that because it's going to hurt. So just hold a towel over the top or a cloth um, that's dry. So I've added this back in. You can see this has made this nice and thick. So this is going to be a cream soup. Now, if you're dairy-free and you don't want to add cream in, um, you can just do it like this. You can also uh, soak some cashews 
and blend that in when you add the potatoes in. Um, so soak some cashews, maybe half a cup or a quarter of a cup in some water, and rinse them off, toss them in with the potatoes in the broth, and that will give it more of a creamy texture. You won't taste the nuts. So I'm gonna keep this on low and just let that simmer. You're also gonna see here that I do still have a found amount, a fair amount of potatoes in there, so we want that. I'm gonna stir up some more here. Let's see what's happening. Move that over. Yep, you can see here the leeks in that are sweating down, which is exactly what we want. So we're gonna let this continue for a short bit. I'm gonna turn this down just a touch, maybe to like a medium low. I definitely don't want those uh, overcooking or browning because it won't make for a pretty soup. So we're just gonna continue to let this saute and we'll come back in a little while. All right, so these leeks are done. Um, I did get a couple little pieces that are a tiny bit brown, but nothing major, so I'm going to get these out. Uh, I'm going to keep the pan on low. Actually, I'll turn off in the moment, but we're going to put it back on because we're going to use this to make a roux and add our cream. And there's our stock, so I'm going to get this. Let's just slide this here, and I'm going to mix all of this leeks and celery and dill and thyme. I'm just going to pop all that in, so it's probably not a very good view for you. Camera work's not always great, but the intention is there. So I've put all these leaks in there. Let's get as much scraped out as I can. There we go. And we're going to leave it aside. I'm just going to get this mixed in. So already you can see this is becoming like a nice, thick, lovely soup. It smells delicious too. I'm going to add in one teaspoon of salt. I'll probably do a little bit less actually because I didn't use um, my own stick and salt. Ugh, sorry, chicken stock or a low sodium once I'm going to put a half a teaspoon in and some uh, fresh ground pepper and you can do pepper to taste and um, then I'll check it after I'm done and salt at the end if I think I need more. So I'm going to get to this next step here. So what we're going to do here is, oops, in the bottom of the pan, I don't want to melt it. There we go. Safe. So I'm going to keep this on a fairly low temperature. I'm going to add in two tablespoons of butter. So that's the other two tablespoons. We're going to let that melt for a minute. So I'll just let that go there. I'm going to grab my cream. Now you have three options here. You can use half and half whipping cream. Whipping cream is what the recipe calls for. Or you can just use milk. Or if, like I said, if you're dairy free, just make a cashew or an almond milk and you can use that. So. I'm going to use whipping cream because I like the thickness and it's a little more decadent, which I really enjoy. So we're going to go with that. So this is just about melted. I do want to get the whole amount of flour melted here. Not flour, sorry. Well, flour too in a minute, I guess. Um, this butter here so we can make our roux. A roux is a thickening agent. You use equal parts of butter or some type of oil, generally butter. And obviously butter tastes much better, so you can use that too. Um, or uh, I guess if you're a vegan, there must be well, maybe a vegan butter you can use. I'm not really sure. Or you could just use olive oil or avocado oil would work nicely. Something that doesn't have a ton of flavor if you're going dairy-free. And uh, you're going to sprinkle in. Let's melt it. I'm going to sprinkle in two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. So we're going to sprinkle that in my other tool aside and we're just going to cook this up here so what this is going to do is you can see all these bits and pieces this is called a roux so I'm going to cook this for about one minute to just cook what they call cook the flour out of it so basically I'm going to turn this up just a tiny bit so you want to get it bubbling there's different types of roux this is a roux for a soup um, you can do which is called like a white or a blonde roux if I'm correct correct me if I'm wrong please um, we're just going to cook this down for a couple of minutes. What this does is takes that real floury taste out. If you've ever made a gravy with, um, you know, with flour and you sometimes, if you don't cook your, your gravy long enough, you get that bit of that pasty powdery taste. So doing this will help get that flavor out. So we're going to just cook that for another minute and uh, then we'll add in the stock. Okay. So I've cooked that down a little bit longer. Uh, like I said, you can add milk, um, uh, alm sorry, milk, almond milk, uh, cashew milk. You can use half and half cream. 
uh, or whipping cream is which is what I'm doing so I'm going to add in that whipping cream and we're going to add that roux in. You're going to see this is going to automatically thicken up. The reason oh, that turned off, that was from your laundry. Um, the reason for doing uh, this is just kind of thicken the soup a little bit more. Now, if you're finding that this is still too thick after you add it in, you can take a little bit of broth and add it in as well, or a bit of milk. And I think I might be having that problem exactly. So I'm just going to dump the rest of this in here. There we go. We'll get this thinned out a little bit. We're going to grab the milk from the fridge and we want to get this so it's lump free. We'll get all the way around the edges as you can see I'm doing here. Whisk works really well if you're using a stainless pan. It won't work as well if you have a non-stick. If you do, just use, oops, sorry about that, uh, just use maybe a wooden spoon. Okay, so I've just got a cup of milk here just set aside. I'm going to add that in as well. The problem is, is if I put this roux in with the soup right now, um, it's a little too thick and it might get lumpy. So I'm going to add a little bit of extra milk in, which certainly doesn't hurt. So I'm just using a 2% here. So I'm going to put about, that's probably about half a cup. So we're going to add that half a cup of milk in. I will turn this up a little bit. So what I want is a consistency where I can kind of pour this a little bit. And then once that's pourable and it's uh, even temperature with the soup, you don't want it boiling, but basically even temperature with that soup, um, we can put it in and it shouldn't get lumpy. And if it does, well, you just have to work with it a little bit and stir and whisk and stir and whisk. And hopefully that will uh, will come back and not be too lumpy. So I'm going to continue with this. And uh, in just one minute, we will be putting this in with the soup. All right, so just add in the rest of that milk. We're just going to give this a good stir here. Let this thicken up a little bit. Uh, if you're ever making macaroni and cheese, macaroni and cheeses start with a roux as well. Uh, homemade anyhow. Um, although that uh, nice lazy box of craft dinner every so often is kind of nice when you don't feel like really doing much. Um, I'm going to add in that little bit of salt here. So I'm just going to do maybe a half a teaspoon. I'll put it in here. You can put it right in the soup, but I'm going to put it in here just so you can see and add in a whole bunch of fresh ground black pepper while this roux is finishing. I just want to bring it back up to a small rolling boil, make sure we have no lumps, and then we're going to add it into our soup. So use as much or as little pepper as you want. I like a fair amount, but again, I'd rather not over season anything in the beginning and, you know, season at the end. So. Let's get this going here, put this up a little bit, so it's nice and hot so we don't have any lumps when we transfer it over. Alright, so the roux is done, it's thickened up nicely. What we're going to do now, I'm just going to come with a scraper here, is I'm going to take this and you can see the soup uh, before we put the roux and the cream in. It's a nice green color, you can eat it just like that if you don't want to put any cream in. It's quite nice, uh, I am going to add it in, like I said, this makes it really decadent. Tastes almost like um, like a clam chowder, like I said. Now, here's the other thing too, is when you're all done, and we're gonna let this simmer for a while on low with the cream now, we don't want this to burn. You can see that's turned out really nice. You put that all in there, so there we go. And that lasts a little bit. So we're gonna let that, um, we're going to let that go for a little while. We're just going to stir this in. You're going to see that color change. Look how beautiful that is. This smells absolutely amazing. So we're going to let this uh, continue to simmer. I'm going to put on my back burner and keep it on low. I'll just check it every 10 minutes or so with that cream. Again, we don't want it to burn. Uh, this makes for a beautiful lunch. You can take uh, to work with a little roll or you can have it for dinner. It's quite a hearty soup. You can see here. Like so, there's lots of nice potatoes in there. You can pick them up without dropping them. So it's nice to have that uh, with the skin. Now we'll let this simmer. When we come back, I'll serve up a nice bowl of that. Um, and remember, if you want to make a little change, um, you can take, um, if you are not down east, if you live down east or out west and you've got, uh, you can get your hands on some clams, you can add in some, cook up some clams and add those in and have a lovely clam chowder. And if you are in, um, like I'm in the city, I can't really, we can buy them, but they're not as nice this time of year. I just buy a can of baby clams, uh, drain them out and add that in and let it cook and I have clam chowder. So we'll uh, come back and get this all served up uh, after maybe half an hour or so letting it simmer. And it will continue to thicken a little bit with that brew that we've added in. Okay, so this soup has been simmering for 
a little over half an hour, so I've turned it off and uh, we've got a little, just a little bowl here ready. So you can see how lovely, I'm just going to plop that back in so you can see how lovely and thick that is. And uh, I've tested it, it doesn't need any more salt and pepper not in there. So I'm just going to pour myself a small little bowl. There we go. And I will put a little bit more pepper on for when I have that. So, you know, I hope you enjoy. Again, this uh, recipe I will post right at the end of the video, the instructions and the ingredients. Feel free to change it up as you see fit. You know, change the herbs if you want. And uh, I hope you enjoy this video. Please come back, uh, like the page, subscribe if you could, share with your friends. And uh, you have a wonderful day and we'll see you again soon. Take care.